the political upset that shaped 2020. Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or depending on the time we're reaching you. Thank you once again, guys, um, for coming out here. We really appreciate you for all you do for this channel. And we pray that even as you support this channel, God Almighty will support you in whatsoever you lay your hands to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you once again, guys. Yes, we've got an interesting one now um, regarding uh, um, the political upset that shaped this year that is ending now. Today is the last day of uh, um, December, the last day of 2020. There's a lot has happen happened within the political space. We'll bring you more details shortly. But before we do, guys, please don't forget to like, share and to subscribe. Thank you once again. As the year 2020 winds down, Jeun Adewi takes a look at political activities in 2020, elections, defections, and analyzes its consequences on the nation's democracy. In the nation's political diary, year 2020 was supposed to be a year of reaping the promises of elected political officers from the 2019 general election, but some isolated governorship and national assembly pools electrified the political atmosphere and political horse trading and elections were once again in the front banner. The country witnessed governorship elections in Edo and Ondo states respectively. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, also conducted legislative by-elections across 11 states in the country. One major characteristic that punctuated all the elections were voter apathy. According to the INEC chairman, Mahmoud Yakubu, the failure of politicians to fulfill campaign promises, violence, and the failure of the authorities to bring corporates to book contributes to low turnout of voters across the country. On Saturday, September 19th, a do state governorship election was conducted and Gordon Obaseki, who was the candidate of the People's Democratic Party PDP, pulled 307,955 votes to defeat Pastor Usaige Izeiyamu of the All Progressive Congress APC, who garnered 223,619 votes in an election participated by other 12 political parties. Obaseki, who won the governorship election in 2016 under the platform of APC, defected to the opposition PDP after the screening committee of his former party disqualified him over discrepancies in his academic qualifications. The qualification has been linked to his SOA relationship with his political godfather and former governor of the state, Comrade Adam Soshomole, who was then the national chairman of APC. Also, on October 10th, governorship election in Ondo State, Governor Rotimi Akeredolo pulled 292,830 votes against 195,791 votes garnered by a Yita of PDP and 69,127 votes scored by the Deputy Governor of the State, Agbola Ajayi, who contested the election on the platform of the Zenith Labour Party, ZLP. INEC on December 5, 2020, conducted by elections in Bayelsa, Cross River, Imo, Lagos, Plateau, Bauchi, Enugu, Kogi, Bernu, Castina, and Zamfara to fill vacant senatorial and state assembly seats. The election dates were adjusted severally due to the ravaging COVID 19 pandemic and the hashtag NSAS protests that nearly crippled social, political, and economic activities in the country for weeks. Defections. Obaseki defected to the PDP on June 19th at the party secretariat in Benin City, the Edo state capital, to actualize his second term ambition. The governor left the ruling APC days after the party governorship election screening committee disqualified him from participating in its primary. Obaseki contested on the platform of the opposition party for a second tenure as governor of Edo state and emerged victorious. Ajayi is the Ondo State Deputy Governor. In his quest to achieve his governorship ambition, he dumped the PDP and after an unsuccessful primary election, moved to the Zenith Labour Party. His drift from the APC was as a result of a political fed between him and his principal, Governor Rotimi Akeredolo. Ajayi contested the 2020 governorship election and lost to Akeredolo. Governor Umayi, on November 19th, officially defected from the opposition to the ruling APC after weeks of speculation. He said that his move to APC was as a result of the injustice and marginalization the Southeast region suffered in the PDP. The governor was officially received into the ruling party 
at an event held in Eboin State with APC governors in attendance. He has since been attacked by top members of his former party, including River State Governor Naysom Wike, Senator Ayim Pius Ayim, Senator Sam Igu, and most of the prominent political bigwins in Edo State who refused to move with him into the APC. They were of the view that his defection is to scheme for the 2023 presidential slot if the party zones it to the southeast. Senator Abo announced his defection from the PDP to APC in a letter addressed to the Senate on Wednesday, November 25th. Ahmed Lawan, Senate President, read the letter during the upper chamber's plenary session. According to him, the senator representing Adamawa North Senatorial District dumped the leading opposition party for APC to attract federal presence in his district. Honorable Yakub Dugara, the former Speaker of the House of Representatives in July, decamped from the PDP to APC. Before his defection, he met with President Mohamed Buhari at Aso Villa, Abuja. The former Speaker's defection to APC may not be unconnected to President Buhari's anti-corruption war and 2023 presidential election. Honorable Yakubu has been described as a serial defector and was part of the team that left the PDP to the APC in 2014 when the party was being formed and later abandoned the party when he foresaw a brick wall on his ambition to return to the House as Speaker. Honorable Sam Onigbo. Honorable Onigbo on November 17th announced his defection to the APC from PDP. In a letter read on the floor of the House by the Speaker Honorable Femi Gwajabia Mila, the Abia lawmaker said he decided to join the APC as a result of the crisis and lack of internal democracy and outright impunity within the PDP. The defection of the lawmaker, who is one of the oldest members of the PDP in the House, created uproar from PDP members who insisted that the Constitution has been breached and therefore his seat should be declared vacant. Political parties are supposed to be an institutional think tank for developing policies and political platforms. Parties were expected to provide critical oversight and push for accountability in government actions through their elected representatives. Political parties implement policies that reflect the ideology of the party. Political analysts are of the opinion that political parties in Nigeria and in other parts of the African continent lack clear political ideologies and explicit message that separate one party from the other. The country's tribal, religious, and geographic divide becomes a major primordial consideration for joining a political party and pushing for a political position that may not outlive the present drivers of the political institution. In the United States, for instance, political parties are defined by their manifestos and modus operandi. If a Republican candidate comes knocking at your door, you have a sense of where he or she stands on the current critical issues. This is not the case in Nigeria, where a politician defects, he or she usually moves with thousands of individuals, including officials of the party, as there is no clear defined difference between the political institution. The 2023 election is just about 26 months away. There is therefore a need for the political class and INEC to push for a new electoral bill, which should allow electronic voting and transmission, a bill that will make other provisions that will check unnecessary movement of politicians from one party to the other at their convenience and stabilize political culture and party democracy. Quite an interesting one. Anyway, guys, thank you once again for staying tuned. Please don't forget to like, share, and to subscribe. Till I come your way again, bye for now and God bless.